Hello, everyone, and welcome to Police Off the Cuff, Real Crime Stories. I'm your host, retired NYPD Sergeant Bill Cannon, a 27-year veteran of the NYPD. Folks, unfortunately, today I have some bad news to bring you, and we've been covering the case of Riley Strain. And everyone was hoping and praying for a miracle um, because there were a lot of indicators that this was not going to end happily. And tragically, this morning, they found his body in the Cumberland River. Uh, According to Fox News from Nashville, the Metro Nashville Police Department reports that the body of Riley Strain, a Missouri College student last seen two weeks ago, was recovered from a Nashville River Friday morning. Uh, The discovery happened around 7.30 a.m. Friday during a search for Riley Strain along the Cumberland River in the West Nashville neighborhood. Police responded to a report of a body found in the river, according to the Next Door Nashville affiliate WKRN. The Metro Nashville Police Department shared the following details on the search. The body of Riley Strain was recovered from the Cumberland River in West Nashville, approximately eight miles from downtown. No foul play-related trauma was observed. An autopsy is pending. Strain was a student at the University of Missouri. He was raised in Springfield, Missouri, and he disappeared while on a fraternity trip on March 8th in Nashville, Tennessee, around 9.30 p.m. that night. He was escorted out of a Nashville uh, bar. Strain told his friends he was headed back to the hotel, but he never made it. His phone was pinged at 10.15 p.m. in the opposite direction of the hotel. According to WKRN, one of his friends called 911 the next morning after saying he went to the Central Police Precinct and called the Sheriff's Office to file a missing persons report. Police followed up on several leads into his disappearance, reviewing surveillance videos from different parts of Nashville and searching around the Cumberland River several times. You know, folks, this is so tragic because it's something that really... Of course, it it happened. We can't undo what happened, but it didn't need to happen, you know? And in the way of, you know, we all have gone out drinking. We've all probably, well, I don't want to speak for everyone I have. And one of the things that was missing here, and not to point fingers at anyone, was friends have to look out for friends. And obviously, if he raised the attention of security in this bar that he was in, uh, then perhaps he was too intoxicated uh, to to walk himself home. You know, there's the bar, uh, Luke's. If they if they were raised up and escorted him out of the bar, uh, and apparently one of his friends walked him to the stairs and walked him down those stairs, and uh, that was it. He went back into the bar, and, and that was the last time the friends had seen Riley alive. A lot of different, you know, theories on this case uh, as it was occurring and theories in the way that some conspiracy theories. And you know something? That puts a full court press on the investigation. And there's there's times in, in, in jurisdictions that the police seemingly don't take something as seriously as a family of Riley, of Riley uh, strain would want them to. Of course, you'd want them to put every single resource possible. And in the beginning, it seemed a little bit slow walking. And many people online, uh, they were taking great umbrage to that. They're not taking this seriously. You know, and when we saw the video of him walking, he looked quite intoxicated. And then when he did a header into that pole, it was like, oh my God. Uh, not only is he intoxicated, but now he could have a concussion. So we're going to show the press conference by by Chief John Drake, and we're going to cover this case. And, you know, unfortunately, we probably have to say, you know, woulda, shoulda, couldas, you know, because that's one of the things we do is we critique what's going on, and not just me, but you guys in the chat, and you guys who follow true crime. And you guys who give your opinions, which that's that are very much valued by me. Sometimes people say I come across too 
hard and too uh, not soft enough on the on the people that make comments. But I think I do, and I think I take you seriously, and I think I give you that respect. Anyway, hold on to your hats, guys. We're about to enter true crime from a police perspective. And, of course, you're entering it off the cuff. You're entering the police off the cuff zone. There has to be some common sense. Yes, sir. They have the car stopped in Tampa Ranch, Michael Biden. We still don't know who pulled the trigger. Folks, I'm about to play the press conference that was given by the Nashville police, uh, Chief John Drake. Seems like a great guy. He was a little bit uh, choked up about this. You can see he's emotional. Police work is very emotional. You know, you deal with the best and the worst that happens to human beings. Anyway, this is Chief John Drake from the Nashville police. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning, I Around 7.28 a.m., we received a call uh, from a worker on uh, 61st Avenue uh, at a company that adjoins the uh, Cumberland River that had been searching for um, anything that would uh, pop up on the river, um, especially looking for Riley Strain, if he would, uh, surface here. As they were removing um, an object from the river, uh, they saw, they noticed uh, what appeared to be rally strain um, pop up. Uh, the fire department uh, was called in, um, retrieved the body from the river. Uh, the medical examiner's office uh, reviewed the body and we've confirmed uh, that it is uh, rally strain. Uh, the family uh, has been contacted. Uh, that if there are no signs of foul play at this time, according to the examination here at the uh, riverbank. Uh, Mr. Strain still had the shirt on that he was wearing, uh, so he had the watch and other identifying factors that helped us identify who he is. I want to say uh, to the family, uh, my heart and prayers go out to you all uh, for this very unfortunate and tragic uh, incident. I also want to say thank you to the Nashville community and the outpouring community of the outpouring support from the community uh, in trying to help us locate uh, Mr. Strain. I also want to say thank you to our USAR team and, and to the fire department and OEM and TWRA and everyone else, including the media, for everything they've done, for the countless tips that came in. Uh, we received nearly 200 tips as of yesterday that we were vetting out. Um, so at this time, the family's been notified. Uh, there would be an autopsy uh, more than likely sometime today. And uh, and we'll have a little bit further uh, from that point. So thank you. Chief, can you tell us, is there any other additional evidence that, that points you to the theory that it seems like you've been going after for a while now? It's just that he fell into the river? Steadily. Yeah, there's no other evidence that suggests anything other than we have reports that uh, normally uh, under these circumstances with, with his, that he could have surfaced between 14 and 20 days. Uh, this is the 14th day. Uh, so we were uh, really expecting uh, anytime soon to, uh, to find it. In fact, our search teams were going to put in in the water here uh, this morning and then search from this point further down. Uh, so uh, we were in the right spot, it's just unfortunate. But there's nothing to suggest anything other than any foul play at all. You said the police were crews that were actually looking for him that found him? Yes, that's, uh, so the workers typically on the river, whether it's barge companies, concrete companies, other businesses that actually are on the river, and they uh, they look routinely, as it's happened countless times before moved, I believe, a barge, and don't quote me on that. They removed something from the river, and as they moved it, they noticed uh, Mr. Strain so, and, and called it in. 
typically work on the water, they weren't necessarily surfing. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you all. You know, folks, in uh so that was that was Chief uh, John Drake. I am in no way berating the Frat Brothers. I think what we need to do in situations like this is to use it as a teaching moment for our kids and, and, and teach them that they must adhere uh, to the buddy system when they go out, when they go out drinking, when they're out with uh, strength in numbers. And I am no way pointing fingers at these Frat Brothers, you know, Everyone has been in situations like this and not, we don't always do the right thing, right? We don't always, hindsight is 2020, which is one of the favorite terms. And I'm not, of course, these frat brothers will have to live with this the rest of their lives. Or what could we have done differently? And, you know, as I said, I would prefer to think of this and refer to this uh, as a learning as a learning situation, you know, and, but unfortunately these situations are just unforgiving, you know, uh, and, you know, we think of a lot of the things, the evidence in this case, and look at how many different directions it went. Many people were insisting that, you know, he was drugged and that could still be the, the, uh, he could have been drugged, but that'll, uh, we'll find that answer out in the toxicology. The other thing is they are, the chief had said there is no evidence at this point of any foul play. And remember the reports that a homeless guy was seen with his shirt on? Well, that turned out to be false. But when these reports come out, especially the power of the internet and the power of um, true crime creators and, you know, something Lots of times, true crime people and content creators on YouTube help solve these cases. They really do. And when we talk about the power, and one of the people that the chief thanked was the media. He thanked the media for uh, keeping this out there, keeping the videos playing on TV, keeping the people aware of what was going on. So knowledge is power. And some of the other things when we think of investigative things, investigative resources, investigative tools, I I felt that this is what was going to happen. I felt that they were going to recover his body in the Cumberland River because one of the top pieces of evidence is going to, I'll put it on the screen right there, was his debit card that was found right on the shore of the Cumberland River. And of course, Found by a uh, a content creator, a TikTok person, and as soon as I saw that, and 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 I heard where it was found, that we saw where it was found, I thought that was an ominous sign that he had fallen into the river, and then all of the you know the other evidence, you know, people were saying, well, if he fell into the river, why didn't we find him? And the chief addressed that because sometimes bodies sink below the surface and they stay under to four anywhere from 14 to 20 days and then they surface and not to to use a police term that's why sometimes bodies that fall into the water well not sometimes they're referred to as floaters because when a person drowns they sink to the bottom and i i don't want to be getting too graphic but when the body builds up with gases it then floats to the surface and it floats down the river. At, but as the chief said, that could take anywhere uh, from 14 to 22 days. And the effort put in to finding Riley Strain was, I believe, second to none. But will it? Uh, these are some of the detectives, and they had cold case homicide working on this case because they wanted to do all they could do. For the families and early early on in the investigation uh you know the police were being pointed at as not doing enough uh why isn't this a criminal case why is it still a missing person case and look i understand i would probably be the same way if it was someone in my family and i'd want the police uh to to do everything and bring in all the resources assign all the personnel possible to this case and 
it appears that that's what they did. But, you know, in these cases, you can't tell a family, oh, we think he fell into the river. Well, they don't want to accept that. Uh, when, uh, it, the evidence pointed to that, but they do not want to accept that, obviously. Missing, missing Stolen Animals Ireland group. Heartbroken for the family. This is from the chat, but it's better they know rather than never knowing. They can bring him home and say goodbye. Some families don't get that closure. Sending prayers from Ireland. Rest in peace, Riley. Well, thank you so much for that. Uh, and I know many of you guys, uh, many of you people in the chat, uh, Elizabeth K from the chat, it's a very sad ending, but at least the family will know more soon and have some closure. You know, I, I, I guess, yeah, the closure is that they found him, you know, and, and bringing him home, not bringing him home alive. And I, and I know all you true crime people that follow this, it's heartbreaking. It is so heartbreaking. And you, you, some, you get attached to these cases, you know. Um, I do. I know I do. And sometimes it's tough to, um, to live these cases, to relive them. I used to live them live with the real people that had these. And um, it's so sad. It's so sad that things like this happen. And then they all, as I said, the only thing, I don't want to point fingers, but the only thing we can do is try to teach our kids and learn from this, you know. And that doesn't help uh, Riley Strain or his family, but it could help the next Riley Strain from this, preventing this from happening. I'm going to play a little bit of Elizabeth Vargas, and this was pre-investigation, of course. Yes, now with the latest is Chris. Actually, pre-finding, I shouldn't say pre-investigation, pre-finding of Riley Strain's body. Dingman, a close family friend of the Strains. Chris, great to have you back with us. I want to ask you, there are several witnesses who have told News Nation they saw Riley Strain that night, that they called police, were only able to reach a voicemail. They still haven't heard back from the Nashville police. What is going on? Uh, we're not sure. We're scratching our head on that ourselves. Uh, the latest video that did pop up last night, uh, the couple, uh, we were blessed they actually reached out to me. Uh, our family is going to get to talk to them this evening. I've been emphasizing how much downtown Nashville is a tourist attraction. We probably have a lot of witnesses that may have seen things that was only there for 12, 24, 48 hours. Uh, this couple was one of those. Uh, they actually walked. Their parents, uh, the mother reached out. She saw Riley. Uh, she made a comment of like, "Are you're not driving tonight. And he goes, no, ma'am. And that is literally incredible news that we've gotten for that. Uh, we're still trying to piece out if that was before the body cam footage of the police officer or. Uh, Chris, hang on one second. We just, in the middle of that really important answer, we lost your audio for a second. Um, can you talk again and let's see if we hear you? They lost his audio, obviously. Okay. We, I think, no, we don't have you. Okay. We're, gonna, we're back. There he goes. Wait, He's I, back. Okay. I think we've got you back. Uh, don't you love technology yes. today? Okay. So this couple <laughs> saw them, uh, saw Riley Strain. She asked if, if you're driving tonight. He assured her he wasn't. We don't know if this was before or after Riley Strain then walked right. past that police officer. But has this couple spoken to the police? They have finally was able to contact the police. They reached out several days prior. Uh, but they have been in contact with the police and turned okay. over their uh, information. Okay. And I, I want to ask you about whether or not the police have gotten any video from any of the fraternity brothers about their activities that night. We know these kids, these college kids especially, take lots of selfies, take lots of videos when they're they are out. They were all out having a great time. Did any of the fraternity brothers provide any cell phone video from that night? We have not been told that anything like that has turned up. And you're exactly right. Uh, they do take TikTok, Instagram, they're constantly posting where they're at, the clubs, etc. Uh, we would love to see that footage. You know, I'm not sure if they've turned those into police. We have not been shown that. Uh, but yes, uh, I think there's viable information in those. I, a lot of people, witnesses who saw Riley Strain that night, including the couple you were just talking about, who obviously asked, oh, you're not driving, are you? Thought he was under the influence. We know that at Luke's Bar and Grill, he only had one alcoholic drink. Have you been able to learn, had the boys been out partying, had they been bar hopping? Do we know what else he had to drink that night or how much? 
Uh, we don't know that, but we do know that prior to there, there was an, another stop along the way at another uh, bar that was downtown. Uh, I, you know, uh, to that extent, what, how much they had drank, we do not know. We're assuming there was alcohol consumed just because he was with the boys and it was the fraternity. But uh, unfortunately, the credit card doesn't show any extreme purchases uh, up until the very last purchase at Luke Bryant's. And you mentioned to, to me last night on this show that he wasn't kicked out of the Luke's bar for disorderly conduct or getting into a fight, that actually he was trying to do uh, something nice. What do you mean by that? Well, what we've been told, and this was, you know, third-hand information, and, and we weren't at the bar, but we were told that he was trying to help somebody uh, there was miscommunication with the staff and possibly the actual bar. Uh, when Raleigh was asked to leave, uh, he walked out. They're, they're on film showing There was no confrontation with security. He walked straight out of the facility. And then finally, you said that Riley's phone did not die. It did not run out of power. How do you know that? We were uh, through... I think Snapchat and one of the other tracking apps that, you know, we have parents, uh, Life360, it actually shows the battery, you know, the battery percentage. Uh, unfortunately, nobody thought to screenshot that that night because we didn't know we were going to need it. But the family members do remember that the battery was not dead or we did not get a notification that it was down to like 15 or 17 percent. So, we know the phone had battery power. Okay, yeah, I'm one of those moms who tracks my kids. I'm familiar with that, but I didn't know I could do that part of it. So, uh, Chris Dingman, thank you so much. Uh so, you know, one of the things is that what we know now uh, and what his, his phone stopped pinging, obviously, was because that was probably at the time that he hit the water. And his watch, he also had an Apple watch and a phone. And... You know, prior to, of course, them finding him, uh, no one wanted to to face up to this. this that that is what happened. Um, and and you know, you want to believe um, that he's alive. You always want to believe that he's alive. And now that we know what occurred, the evidence can be looked at in in that vein. And you notice that the chief of uh, John Drake in his press conference said, look, we saw, we see on the body no signs of, uh, of trauma or foul play right now. Uh, I don't know if the autopsy has been completed yet, but they were able to identify him on the scene by some of his property, obviously. I, I don't know if at that point they had his cell phone on that uh, on his his body but apparently he had his watch so um they were able to identify him right at the scene and look you got to realize also he's been uh in the river for uh 14 days and if you've ever seen a body that's been in the water submerged for that long it's not a pretty sight to see um so all of these things uh, are factors in this case. And, and when we talk about, you know, we, we watch the video of him uh, stumbling on the ball, walking up the block, and, you know, you, you almost wish, you wish as a parent, I could have helped him, you know, I could have helped that kid. And um, no one knows, of course, that something tragic is about to happen, right? Uh but that's what did happen. Um, from from the uh, chat, Scout Inquirer. Hi, longtime sweet friend. It has definitely been a hot minute. How, oh, I'm sorry. You're talking to someone else in the chat. I thought you were going to talk about something in regards to the case. Um, uh, Lily Blue, no, uh, Darcy Miller, wasn't he under a barge also? They, they didn't indicate he, he was under a barge. They, he could have been caught under something. They didn't provide that much information. Um, and they just said it wasn't the police that recovered him. It was someone that works on the river. Um, talks to angels from the chat. I doubt it's foul play, but he, he's been in the water two weeks. Uh, talks to angels 100%. Uh, and um, Lily Blue. Uh, to, no, again, there's, there's something you guys talk to each other in the chat. Um, 
Paint me twice. Riley's parents should have a lawyer to get everything on record, especially in regards to Luke's. Well, you know, something I think that um, bars these days, I mean, one of the things that Luke said was that they only served him one drink and then he was served two waters. But there's always the, the old backup, and that's video. So in regards to a civil case, I think that's what you're referring to. Um, they can they can check the video. They absolutely can. T. Hopkins in the chat, Press the family don't think there was foul play. Dr being drunk and hitting your head is a bad combination. T. Hopkins, I 100% agree with you. Uh, it's It's such a sad situation because people make mistakes in this life, right? And sometimes you get away with making mistakes and other times those mistakes can cost you your life, as in this case. Folks, this is Police Off the Cuff, real crime stories. If you like real crime, true crime, then you're in the right place. And if you're not subscribed to us, go on our YouTube, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and hit that like button. Hit the like button and share us with your friends and your family. We are a good community here. Also, if you want to contribute to us financially, we have a Patreon with three different levels, and we also have a YouTube channel membership with count them five different levels, and we appreciate all our fans, our friends, our subscribers. Sometimes people don't like to be called fans, so I'll call you our friends and our subscribers, and we've made a, a, a whole YouTube family here at the Police Off the Cuff family. I want to play another uh, about some of the volunteers in this case, about how no stone was left unturned in this case. And we'll put this up on the screen now. That 911 call and the massive search for this young man. We're joined now by Riley's stepfather, Chris Whited, and family friend, Chris Dingman. Thank you both so much for joining us. Um, Chris, I'm so sorry to meet you under these circumstances. Um, I really, my heart breaks for your family. I just first want to know how you guys are doing and holding up right now. We're doing as good as we can, you know, under the circumstances. Um, the community has been amazing for, you know, supporting us, especially since we're six and a half hours away from our home. Are you still holding out hope you're going to find Riley alive? We are. We're, we're, we're still hopeful. We can't give up hope until we have any other reason not. You know, that's some question to ask the parents of a child, you, are you still holding out hope that you're going to find them alive? If, yeah, 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 absolutely. We, we will have hope. We're going to have hope right until the minute that there is no more hope. Not to be. All right. We're hearing that police showed you some new surveillance video today. What, what does it show Riley doing? Uh, the video was shown to us Sunday after they found the um, debit card, after the debit card was found. We met with the police and they showed us the video. It was the last known video of Riley, um, basically from where the body camera footage was with the officer to just right before the uh, James Robertson Bridge. Um, we, we, we got to see him walking, um, got to see him kind of at a fast paced walk, almost a jog, um, and it just, it shortened the um, last known window anyways. We're looking right now at a body cam video from a Nashville police officer who also had a brief encounter with Riley. If we can rewind that video, guys, in the control room and show the beginning of it again, you can see Riley walking. He looks just fine in that part of the video. Is that how we looked in that surveillance video, too, where he's walking pretty normally? It appeared so. It was from... Uh, a distance, but again, he he did seem to be walking either at an extremely fast pace or jogging, and we all know how hard it is to uh, balance, let alone walking if you're, you know, been drinking, let alone try to jog. Chris Dingman, we're also hearing more about this couple who saw Riley around the time of this police surveillance video and the surveillance video that the families had a chance to see. This couple, they're tourists from out of town. 
um, they they said they called Nashville police. They did not hear back. They said they actually were concerned about Riley. The woman asked him, hey, are you OK? Uh, you're not going to drive, are you? Because he did seem to be uh, drunk at that point, right? Yes, yes. Uh, we were fortunate enough. The family did reach out via a friend, uh, a retired FBI agent, uh, got us in contact with them. And, and I tell you what, last night, the, the families got together where we went on a, a voice call or a FaceTime, whatever you call it, and the families got to spend some time together. Uh, the gentleman that was there uh, was literally in tears with the family. Uh, mm -hmm. He had a lot of guilt, which the family would. They have multiple children of their own. And as I explained to him, I said, don't, you know, don't second guess anything you did. You're the only one that we know that was compassionate enough to even ask Riley if he was okay or even talk to him. Not saying no one else did, but you know, that meant a lot to the family. And I wanted to make sure that family knew it. You know, they were kind and compassionate enough to even ask folks. This is of course pre. We're going over what happened before they found him today. And we know just to recap that they found uh Riley's body today at 7 30 in the morning in the Cumberland River. This is pre things. This is what led to it. These are some of the things we can learn about this bad situation. And we all have kids, college age kids. And, you know, drinking is something that um, you really have to educate your kids about, you know, and about uh, the buddy system, drinking and driving, uh, being safe when you go out. All of those things are, you know, learning, uh, teaching moments, as former President Obama used to say all the time. This is a teaching moment. And we we hope that we can all learn from this. And yes, this is pre-finding Riley Strain's body. You know, and follow up with Riley. And Riley followed them and still communicated with them a little bit. You know, nothing more to what had happened that evening. But it was really refreshing for the families to get together and you know just emphasize we've been saying this the whole time there's a lot of people that was in nashville that weekend sure. that was only there you know for 12 hours 24 hours 36 hours this couple's three or four states away so we could possibly find the right couple that had the rest of the pieces of the puzzles we would sure love to see them did this couple tell you anything else about their brief encounter with riley that was helpful to you they, they did mention that he was on the phone, which we've kind of, Chris had already noticed that the cell phone data, that there was an ongoing phone call. There was a conversation uh, with uh, a male gentleman that, you know, we thought may possibly quite have been his fraternity brothers. Uh, you know, to, to the distance of what that conversation was, it was a little unclear at the time, but, uh, you know, there was a conversation with which who we think was them, and they were probably trying to look for Riley or figure out where he was. Did, it, uh, did, did the couple say that Riley seemed to be looking for something? We know he was headed in the exact opposite direction from his hotel. Do either of you have any theories on why he would? So, you know, right now, guys, it's it's tough to, to, to listen to this because there was a lot of, of course, conjecture. And uh, there was a lot of people, um, conspiracy theories, if you will, about what happened to him. Uh, someone just said in the chat, why was his uh, debit card found on the ground right near uh, the shore? I, I really can't answer that, you know. Maybe he had it inside his pocket and he had it in his hand and he dropped it. I, I don't, you know, people want to interpret that as foul play. But, you know, something, what you, when, you, when you're intoxicated, you do strange things sometimes, you know. And... Many people were looking at this as, oh, is this foul play? And how about even about the homeless guy that was allegedly wearing his shirt that had vomit on it? That turned out not to be true. Pamela White from the chat, thank you so much for the $5 super sticker. Very much appreciated. Uh, from the chat, Marie Finnegan, poor guy, heartbreaks for his family. What a sad outcome. Not trying to be smart, but maybe be a comfort knowing there was no foul play. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Helen, rest in peace. Riley, condolences to the family and friends. Hi from South Australia. Been following this story as my niece lives in Nashville. This is so sad. Absolutely. 
Carmelita Dorsey, good to see you. I think putting blame on others isn't fair. Yes, it would have been great if someone had intervened, but even if they called 911, that doesn't mean he would not have fell in before help arrived. Carmelita, I'm not trying to point fingers at anyone. I think that what we need to do as a community here is to learn from this. And hopefully people that listen to this show, you learn from this and teach your kids, you know, a but a buddy system when they go out. Uh women when they go out jogging. Don't run alone, you know. We saw that horrendous murder of the girl and the girl Riley, the University of Georgia. And there's always strength in numbers, you know. So if we could teach, if we get a teaching moment here, yeah, I want people to learn. I don't want to point fingers, but I want people to learn from this. Bama Girl 75. If he had the debit card in his pocket on his shirt so he could use it easily at the bars without having to take out his whole wallet, it could have come out when he fell down the embankment. Bama Girl, yeah, that's a, that's as good an explanation as anyone I can think of. Uh, Mitz, Miss T. Blue, police aren't going to come rushing over because someone is walking around drunk. He wasn't doing anything to warrant. No, I, I agree. I agree. But, you know, something, because we know uh, what happened um, and we know it was a bad outcome, that many people now can do the woulda, shoulda, could have. You know, oh, they should have did this. They would have did that. They, you know, uh, Carmelita Dorsey, I'll put you... Uh, on the screen. I know that Sarge, I meant others have been blaming the boys, frat brothers, etc. Well, you're right. You know something, in this litigious world we live in, right away, uh, someone lost their life, someone has to be blamed. And sometimes, you know, you can point at the bar, and if their records are correct, and if their video, which they'll no doubt go to, but if their records are the correct they said that they only served uh riley one drink and then two waters i don't know if he paid for the water they gave him water but so if that's the case but you know something the liability for bars these days uh obviously a bartender is not allowed to serve someone who appears to be intoxicated but what is intoxicated Intoxicated for one person is very difficult uh, or very different than intoxication for another. You may know someone that can drink till the cows come home and they don't appear intoxicated, but obviously, based on how much they drank, uh, they are, you know. So I, I want to go over a, a little bit of the uh of the time, the timeline. This and there's a picture of Riley up on the screen. Uh Friday, March 8th. Riley and his fraternity brothers from Missouri come to Nashville for a fraternity event. They were reportedly staying at the Tempo Hotel downtown. Riley went to Luke's 32 Bridge on Broadway Friday night where records show he purchased and was served one alcoholic drink. Uh, one, al one alcoholic drink and uh, two waters. Strain's mother, Michelle Whit Whit Whited, said she FaceTimed with him just a few hours before he went missing. At 9.35 p.m., uh, Strain was kicked out of the bar in a, in a statement. The TC Restaurant Group, which owns and operates the bar, said its security team made a decision based on our conduct standards to escort him from the venue through our Broadway exit at the front of our building. He was fouled down the stairs with one of his friends, according to the bar. bar However, his friend reportedly did not exit and returned upstairs. At around 9.45 p.m., surveillance video from downtown smoke and vape shop on Church Street caught Riley stumbling and falling in a parking lot at 3rd Avenue and Church Street. At 9.47 p.m., surveillance video caught strain crossing 1st Avenue north to Gay Street. Um, between 9.55 and 10 p.m., Strain's last phone ping was near James Robertson Parkway and Gay Street. Detectives said the last phone conversation Strain had with one of his friends was also during the same time period. Uh, according to police, the phone ping covered about a two-mile radius and didn't give them a direction of travel, any more detailed information about where Strain might have gone. On Saturday, March 9th at 1.46 p.m., so this is the next day, 
Riley Strain's friend called 911 after saying he went to the Central Police Precinct and called the Sheriff's Office to file a missing person report. Riley Strain's family also received a call from his fraternity brothers, alerting them that they had not seen or heard from him since Friday night. Strain's parents said they drove to Nashville from Springfield, Missouri, as soon as they got the call. Monday, March 11th at 2.11 p.m., the Metro Nashville Police Department posted an X saying it still working to locate Strain and asking the public the tips. Strain's family and friends spoke to Next Star WKRN, calling this the worst nightmare. His stepfather, Chris Whited, said Strain had been on the same trip before with no issues and would normally talk to his family three or four times a day. Uh, He's my baby, Michelle said with tears in her eyes. Please, if you know anything, please, please call the police. I mean, this is so tragic. I mean, you you just can't even imagine how... um, if it was your son, you know, if it was your family member, uh, it's just very, very difficult uh, to accept what occurred. And the only good thing that can possibly come out of this is that we learn something from it. Uh, we learn and, you know, we teach our kids, you know, about the dangers of alcohol and all of that stuff and uh, the buddy system. Uh, from the chat, Alex Serenillion figured this is what it was in light of recent insights. Hope the family took the, well, the family's not going to take the news okay. I mean, obviously, in life, we take bad news and we have to deal with it, but no one's going to be okay with receiving this news. Uh, talk to angels. Next, we'll be assigning babysitters for every adult that purchases alcohol at the grocery store alone. For adults not responsible for themselves. Talk to angels, yeah, we are ultimately responsible for ourselves, but we all have people in this world, people in our lives that love us, you know? And it's that old expression, are, are you your brother's keeper? And you don't have to be, but is it a good thing that you help your brother or your sister when something bad could happen to them? Uh, small town girl Fisher, I hope that. Luke Barr changes their rules. They don't let a drunk person out unless they have a friend or somebody that's with them or call a taxi. Or, well, you know something? That's some kind of uh, responsibility to put on a business. And I don't think that you could do that. I don't think you can make a, uh, a bar responsible for how you get home. Uh, I mean, they are responsible to a certain extent with how much alcohol they serve you, because clearly in any state, um, bartenders are not allowed to serve intoxicated people. But look, alcohol is a drug, let's face it. So we're taking a legal drug. uh, And the responsibility to how much of that legal drug we consume is basically on us, not the bar, it's on us, right? Um, Mama Bear, Riley is responsible for Riley. He's an adult. But I'm thinking he was drugged either at Garth Brooks Bar or Luke Bryan's Bar. Well, Mama Bear, we don't have any evidence of that right now. I mean, you can assume that. uh, Pamela White from the chat. Anna Harris, I want to know that too. His fraternity brothers did not report him missing. Well, they didn't report him missing till the next day. Um, And again, do we point our fingers at other kids? Kathy Bauer from the chat. I have kids at the University of Missouri. I think you have to state that and university. The university is wrong. Sounds from the chat. This sounds, no, they were in Nashville. They go to their students from the University of Missouri. Their frat was from the University of Missouri. They were on a trip to Nashville, Tennessee. I think I made that clear. Uh, I, I don't know why you assumed I was saying something different. No. They were in Nashville, Tennessee, and they are from the University of Missouri. Uh, so, guys, you know, it's we all have ideas about what could have been done, what should have been done. But this goes on every night in every city in America, you know. And the only thing we can do is to teach our children better, teach them 
I sound like I'm, you know, ad nauseum. I love that expression. Sounds like I'm teaching over and over and over again, but sometimes you have to pound something into people's heads, you know, that, yeah, teach your kids the buddy system. Teach your kids alcohol responsibility. Teach your kids to look out for their friends. That's all I'm saying. Is that putting down these fraternity brothers? No, no. But will they have to live with this for the rest of their life? Yeah. Are they going to feel guilt over this? Yeah, I think they are. Uh, uh, Melissa Stiller, years ago, my son went to a bar and had his bottled water drugged. Melissa, that can happen, you know. That's another reason why you need your friends to be with you, you know. Going out alone maybe is not a good idea either, right? So the buddy system, I can't, uh, I can't bring that up more than I have. The buddy system is so very important. Uh, Here's another WKRN report on what occurred. Good morning to you. I'm Blake Easton with News 2. We're following breaking news right now. Metro Police confirmed they have found the body of missing college student from Missouri, Riley Strain. The body was found in the Cumberland River near 61st Avenue North around 730 this morning. 22-year-old Strain disappeared while on a fraternity trip here in Nashville on March 8th, today marking two weeks since his disappearance. News 2's Peyton Kennedy joins us now live from the nation. She's been there on the ground following this breaking news force all morning long. Peyton, what can you tell us right now? Yeah, Blake, good morning. Riley has been found this morning in the Cumberland River, about eight miles from downtown Nashville. So this area has been covered with Metro Police vehicles, fire departments, and just recently, a medical examiner transport van left the scene here. We are expecting to hear directly from Metro Police in just a matter of minutes. But from what they have shared with us so far, we understand that no foul play trauma appears to have been involved and a full autopsy report will be pending. But of course, we are thinking of his family this morning as they have been very involved in this search process. Now, two weeks out from when Riley was last seen. So we'll keep you updated here on scene, Blake. But for now, back to you. Uh, Peyton, and before you go this morning, uh, I'm just curious, have you got a sense from officials there on the ground if we can anticipate any sort of press conference uh, or, or really what we can expect from this point forward? Obviously, this has been uh, an ongoing search gaining national attention over the past two weeks, um, and, and certainly a lot of questions remain. Uh, I'm curious what you're learning there on the ground from officials and if, if the family is nearby, perhaps. Yeah, Blake, we are expecting to hear from the MMPD at 945. So that's one minute away. I'm expecting they will come here to this point. We're right outside of an Exxon Mobil facility. Uh, this is where they've been able to get closer to the water to pull him out of the water at this point. So again, they are meeting us here in just a matter of minutes. As for family, I do believe they have been called to the scene here um, to speak with police as well. But I do know that the medical examiner's van is no longer here. It has been taken away from this point. Um, so we will expect to hear from police shortly, Blake. Certainly, this is not the update. No one wanted to hear, Peyton. I I'm curious, you've been covering this story for the past couple of weeks. I mean, we saw this thing stretch from when the, the college senior was reportedly kicked out of that bar there on Broadway, police been to, begin to kind of piece together surveillance video that was found uh, downtown Nashville, leading him to North Gay Street. And now we've seen search crews come in from, from all over. I mean, as of the latest this morning, Peyton, you were telling us about there were new search efforts there on the Cumberland River um, leading us now to this conclusion. Uh, I'm curious if, if you're getting a sense of all the volunteers who've been called and if they're still learning of the news right now as we learn about it. Yeah, we know that this has been a nonstop effort from all angles. We have had people in the sky in helicopters using drones and then really people on the water focusing their search here in a 40 mile radius from downtown Nashville all the way to the dam, which is about 40 miles away from where Riley was last seen. And overnight, there was even a search uh, with new technology to try and find 
pieces of evidence on the floor of the river. So we do know that he was discovered here earlier this morning and those efforts have now come to a close. But certainly all of the people who have been involved, all of the volunteers that have come forward, specifically with the United Cajun Navy as well, will be learning of this. And uh, just I feel for everyone that's played a part in this. I know so many volunteers as well have been in downtown Nashville, hanging up flyers, trying to piece together what information we have from those surveillance videos that have been released, the body camera footage that's been released. So now we are we will learn more as well after that autopsy is completed uh, to hopefully piece together a little bit more information about what exactly happened to Riley Blake. Certainly a heartbreaking development we're learning about this morning. Our thanks to Peyton there live on the scene for us this morning. Of course, she will remain there uh, getting any new information that we learn and can pass along to you. But if you're just now joining us this morning, we can confirm uh, the body of 22 year old Riley Strain has been recovered from the Cumberland River this morning. This has been a search for the past two weeks that we have followed extensively, stretching all the way from downtown Nashville uh, to the Cheatham Dam, now coming to a heartbreaking end this morning on the day that it marks two weeks since his disappearance here in Nashville as the college senior was just visiting the city on a fraternity trip. Obviously, a lot of questions still remain unanswered this morning. We are expecting a press conference from officials. We do not have a time yet on that press conference, but as soon as we do, we will pass that along to you. So we we, we know that there was a press conference. You know, guys, I, ju I just, um, I'm seeing a lot of things in the chat that so somewhat baffle me. And I just want to take a little short little poll. If you think that Riley Strain got intoxicated uh, and fell into the river and lost his life, and that's that's what happened. No conspiracy, no drugging. Uh, put a one in the chat. If you think that someone else caused his death, or he um, he was drugged, or he was pushed into the river, put a two. Because it seems that, you know, in situations like this, we hate to, to, to blame the person it happened to, but we are all masters of our own destiny, you know? No one forces you to drink and do stupid things. And in my opinion... I think that's what happened. I think he was highly intoxicated, and I think he fell down and fell into the river and lost his life. I don't see, and think of all the other things that were going on during this investigation. Uh, he was drugged. He, would ki he was kidnapped. He was uh, a homeless guy was seen wearing his shirt. That was totally not true. That wasn't true. And these things take on a life of their own. If you don't look at them uh, with a clear head yourself and think of how tight the timeline was. And one of the things is that the cell phone and his watch basically just boom, cut off. And you saw the family talking about that they know that there was plenty of battery power. And to me, that said, well, that's when he went into the water. That's what killed his phone, and that's what killed his watch. And all of these things, you know, we have the most unbelievable investigative tools these days that we can practically pinpoint where a human being is if, unless something goes wrong like it did here, like he went into the river, and then his phone stopped pinging. His watch stopped working and those were all indicators but when we heard the chief john drake from the nashville police say that as far as we can see right now and as far as the preliminary examination went of his body there was no foul play in this case there was no foul play and what happened was what it looked like he got intoxicated and he fell into the river. Can it be that? Isn't that what the investigation reveals? And I, I mean, Julia Ann, so most of you guys are saying one. Um, uh, Dawn, uh, Clater, uh, Dawn Claterman, he was found with the shirt on. Yes, which destroys 
the uh, pr the premise or a witness that said she saw a homeless guy or he saw a homeless guy walking around with Riley's shirt. That was totally not true. So all of these things, like what, now when we look at it and we 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 basically know what happened. Uh, and I think there's still a lot of people out there that aren't believing that that's what happened. Maui Swift in the chat. Thank you so much, Maui. You're a great subscriber, a great fan. Maui has gifted five police off the cuff memberships. And thank you so much, Maui. You're promoting my show for me. And I know you've been around for a bunch of years. And uh, I really appreciate everything you do and have done for me. Uh, thank you so much. Helen, the Scottish Lama. Um, love is the key, you say. Yes. Uh, Heather, whatever. The teaching lesson in the story online also. Absolutely. Uh, small town girl, Fisher, what's it going to take to get them to put a fence up where that poor fellow, you know, they're not going to put a fence up. You know something, is it going to be fences up because people fell into a river? That's that's not going to cure that. What we must do is we must um, protect ourselves better, make better decisions. That's the cure. You can't put a fence up everywhere something occurs. I'm going to play uh, a little more of Chief John Drake. Many of you guys tuned in later. You haven't heard the press conference. This is the Nashville Police Chief, John Drake, who you can see is emotionally connected to this case. And uh, here's John Drake. On uh, 61st Avenue, uh, at a company that adjoins the uh, Cumberland River that had been searching for um, anything that would uh, pop up on the river, um, especially looking for Riley Strain, if he would uh, surface here. As they were removing um, an object from the river, uh, they saw, they noticed uh, what appeared to be Riley Strain um, pop up. Uh, the fire department uh, was called in, uh, retrieved the body from the river. Uh, the medical examiner's office uh, reviewed the body and we've confirmed uh, that it is uh, Riley Strain. Uh, the family uh, has been contacted. Uh, that if there are no signs of foul play at this time, according to the examination here at the uh, riverbank. Uh, Mr. Strain still had the shirt on that he was wearing, uh, so he had the watch and other identifying factors that helped us identify who he is. I want to say uh, to the family, uh, my heart and prayers go out to you all uh, for this very unfortunate and tragic uh, incident. I also want to say thank you to the Nashville community and the Outpoint community of the Outpoint support from the community uh, in trying to help us locate uh, Mr. Strain. I also want to say thank you to our USAR team and and to the fire department and OEM and TWRA and everyone else, including the media for everything they've done, for the countless tips that came in. Uh, we received nearly 200 tips as of yesterday that we were vetting out. Um, so at this time, the family's been notified. Uh, there would be an autopsy uh, more than likely sometime today, and, uh, and we'll have a little bit further uh, from that point. So thank you. Chief, can you tell us, is there any other additional evidence that, that points you to the theory that it seems like you've been going after for a while now? It's just that he fell into the river steadily? Yeah, there's no other evidence that suggests anything other than we have reports that uh, normally uh, under these circumstances with, with his, that he could have surfaced between 14 and 20 days. Uh, this is the 14th day, uh, so we were uh, really expecting uh, anytime soon to uh, to find it. In fact, our search teams were going to put in in the water here uh, this morning and then search from this point further down. Uh, so uh, we were in the right spot. It's just unfortunate. But there's nothing to suggest anything other than any foul play at all. You said if we were proved that we're actually looking for him that found him? Yes, that's uh, so the workers typically on the river, whether it's barge companies, concrete companies, other businesses that actually are on the river, and they uh, they look routinely, as it's happened countless times before, 
moved, I believe, a barge, and don't quote me on that. They removed something from the river, and as they moved it, they noticed uh, Mr. Strait so, and, and called it in. Folks, this is obviously a press conference from earlier. Some of you guys are seeing the time up on the screen and thinking it's live. It's not live. This was a press conference from earlier. The body was found at about, about 0730 hours today's date, uh, March 22nd, 24. But this was much earlier today. Uh, it's not live. Work on the water. They weren't necessarily searching. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you all. So that was Chief of the Nashville Police, uh, Chief John Drake. Uh, horrible. You could see that he's uh, he's given these press conferences many, many times, and he, he's very uh, touched by it. It's not an easy thing to do, to have to tell someone's family that you recovered their son in the river. And uh, unfortunately, this outcome was not the outcome that any of us wanted here. We were all hoping and praying that uh, yeah, Riley would be recovered and Riley would be alive. But unfortunately, that's not what happened. Folks, if you're looking for a great attorney in the New York metropolitan area, then Joe Murray is your man. Joe's a retired NYPD police officer and a fantastic defense attorney. You can reach Joe on his cell phone at 718-514-3855. Email him at joe at jmurray-law.com. Or go on his website jmurray-law.com. Not only is Joe a fantastic attorney, but he's also a huge supporter of the Police Off the Cuff podcast. There he is, a uh, picture of him up, up on the screen saying, what do you want from me? You know, so that's that's Joe Murray. Um, folks, that's going to be our show today. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. I want to thank everyone that said prayers for Riley's family, uh, everyone that followed this case and was hoping and praying that he would be found alive. Unfortunately, you know, life doesn't always work out that way, and bad things happen in the, in the true crime, the real crime community, and uh, we wish we could uh, we could help. And the, the only way you could help, again, and is to teach your children uh, responsible drinking, the buddy system, and, you know, the other thing is if you drink, don't drive. All of those things. And again, prayers for the family of Riley Strain. And uh, God bless all you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Bill Cannon from Police Off the Cuff Real Crime Stories. One episode, just